All right, so what's the best gaming processor that you can buy right now? It's a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. And what's the second best gaming processor that you can buy right now? It's a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. And if you're looking for the best mid-range processor for gaming that's got the best future upgrade options, what's the best choice right now? It's a Ryzen 5 7600. So what do all the best gaming PCs have in common right now? They're all using an AMD processor. Most gaming PCs today are gonna have an AMD processor, which is a huge change from just a few years ago when pretty much every gaming PC had an Intel processor. And here's the thing about AMD processors. They don't really like very high frequency RAM. You'll often hear about somebody using 8,000 megahertz RAM or some other crazy high frequency RAM with their 7800X 3D setup. But the truth is AMD processors don't really benefit from crazy high speed RAM, especially the X3D processors. And they also don't run the RAM at the speed that you think they do. Let me explain. First up, let's start with the base. Basics. Other than the gigabytes of RAM that you've got, which is your capacity, you've got two main metrics to consider. You've got the bandwidth, which is usually measured in megahertz, and you've got the latency, which is usually displayed as a CL rating on the RAM kit. So the bandwidth of DDR5 RAM is usually going to be about 6,000 megahertz, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Higher bandwidth usually feels pretty similar to getting a boost of CPU performance. So if you're playing a game and you've got a CPU bottleneck, getting faster megahertz RAM is usually going to give you a bit of a boost. And like I said earlier, latency is shown as a CL rating. Now, the lower the CL number, for example, DDR5 is usually CL36 or CL32, then the lower the latency. Now, lower latency is a good thing. It essentially makes your PC feel more responsive, and the most obvious way that you can feel this difference is your aim in shooters will be better. And it's kind of similar to getting a monitor with a faster response rate. You just find that your mouse does what you want it to do quicker. So essentially, you want high bandwidth and low latency for the best results, but if you go too far on either of these two metrics, you usually run into instability issues. Now, for the best results, I recommend that you get some RAM from the QVL list from your motherboard's website. So find your exact model of motherboard, go to the website for it, click on support, and find the compatible ability list and make sure the RAM is on that list. Just a final side note on bandwidth and latency, you need to bear in mind that it's actually your processor that determines what kind of RAM you can run. The better the chip, which is completely random, the better and faster RAM that you can run. And not all processors are created equally, even if they're the same model name. Now here's the thing about AMD AM5 processors. Whilst they are the best gaming processors right now that your money can buy, they don't like going over 6,000 megahertz and this is why. Now the explanation for this is actually related to something called UCLK. I'm not going to go too into detail here. I won't even explain what the acronym means and there are some other things that are kind of technically related but just to keep it very simple, the UCLK is what we're going to look at here. So if you've got an AMD AM5 processor and your RAM is 6400 megahertz or higher, it is very likely running latency that is higher than it should be and that's not a good thing. Now we built a PC with a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and 64 megahertz 32 gig RAM. Now if I open up Task Manager and I click on Performance and then click on Memory, you can see 6400 mega transfers per second, which is great, right? Well, if I run Hardware Info 64 and I scroll down to the CPU Enhanced section, I can see that the UCLK is running at 1600 megahertz. So if you double 1600, you get 3200, which is half of the speed that the 6400 megahertz RAM is supposedly running at. Since 3200 is half of 6400, that means the UCLK is running at a ratio of one to two. And we really need that UCLK to run at a ratio of one to one, otherwise we get increased latency. If I go to the BIOS and I change the DRAM frequency from 6400 megahertz to 6000 megahertz, and then I go to Task Manager, now I can see 6000 mega transfers per second. And if I go to Hardware Info 64 and I check the UCLK, I can see that it's now running at 3000 megahertz. Double the 3000 megahertz is 6000 megahertz, and that's the speed that our RAM is running at, so the UCLK is running at a ratio of one to one. But why does this happen and why does it matter? Well, the easy explanation is that the AMD AM5 processors don't like going over 6000 megahertz RAM and if you do they're going to half the speed and you'll see a UCLK ratio of 1 to 2 but we really need a UCLK ratio of 1 to 1 for the best latency. Now there's two things that you need to bear in mind here. Now first up Intel CPUs don't have a UCLK to speak of so you don't need to worry about this stuff. You can just grab the fastest RAM from the QVL list of your motherboard, turn on XMP and you're good to go. Now I still don't recommend that you go over 6400 megahertz RAM because like I said earlier not all CPUs are created equally and you can have two identical model CPUs from the same batch. One will run 8000 megahertz and the other might struggle to go over 6400. Now the second thing to bear in mind is that some apps may benefit from the higher bandwidth even with the worst latency but in my opinion it's still best to stick to a one-to-one -one ratio because the benefits of the higher bandwidth are pretty minimal usually and the benefits of better latency are quite obvious. Now when I'm choosing RAM I like to consider five things. Now the first thing I'm considering is the value. I don't want to overspend on my RAM especially if I can get something that's nearly as good for half the price. Now the second thing I like to consider is the megahertz. As you can tell I like 6000 megahertz but still bearing in mind value, I might sometimes buy 6400 megahertz RAM and just reduce the frequency to 6000 if it saves me 
me some money. The third thing I'm considering is the CL rating. So I'm aiming for CL32, CL36 is also okay, and CL30 is sometimes a pretty similar price, but anything below this is honestly a bit of a waste of money. Now, weirdly enough, the fourth thing that I consider is the RGB, because some RAM kits will require you to use a proprietary software to control the RGB, and I prefer to get RAM that allows you to sync with your motherboard software so you can control the RGB of everything in your PC from the one place. Now, the fifth and final thing that I consider is the reliability of the RAM. Now, this is really hard to gauge because there's so many RAM kits out there, but fortunately, I've got the data on which RAM kits have worked for us and I like to stick to the stuff that works. The best thing you can do for reliability of your RAM is just get something from a reputable brand. Now, this video is sponsored by Silicon Power. They reached out to me and originally, I was gonna make a video on their Pulse RAM, which is just black heat sink, but I asked them if we could swap to the Storm RGB kit instead because I think this style suits the PCs that we build a lot better. This specific kit is 6400 megahertz and CL32, which is perfect for us because for the AMD PCs, we just bring down the DRAM frequency to 6000, and for the Intel PCs, we just turn on XMP and leave it alone. It's also on the QV list of a lot of budget and mid-range motherboards, including the MSI B650M gaming Wi-Fi, which we use for quite a lot of gaming PCs. Now, first up in terms of value, this Storm RGB kit is genuinely at a great price. The price that you pay will depend on the country that you're in, but in Australia, I found that this specific kit was consistently priced among the lowest for all the mainstream brands. Secondly, this is a 6400 megahertz kit, and like I said, I don't really recommend going over 6400 megahertz anyway. Now, next up, the latency of this RAM kit is CL32, which is already perfect, but if you do want a 6000 megahertz CL30 kit, the got that available and it was actually a slightly lower price. Now the reason I didn't go for the 6000 CL30 kit was because I couldn't find it on the QVL list of a lot of motherboards that I wanted to use so I just left it out and got the CL32. The RGB of this RAM kit very simply just works with your motherboard RGB software so you don't need any special app to change the colors just plug it in and use whatever you like to use. And lastly on the topic of reliability I need to bear in mind that we've built thousands of PCs and we give everyone a three-year warranty that includes all the courier fees so for me reliability is always number one. Now Silicon Power is not the brand that I've used the most RAM kits from in the past, but I checked and historically, we've actually got a 0% fault rate on both Silicon Power SSDs and Silicon Power RAM. So while I can't give you the exact reliability figures of this kit of RAM, you can use that information any way that you like. Now to summarize this entire video in a short space of time, if you've got an AMD processor, stick to 6000 megahertz RAM, because if you go past 6000, you very likely run your UCLK at a ratio of one to two, which increases latency, and that's a bad thing. Your games and your PC in general will feel a lot less responsive. If you've got an Intel processor, you can just grab the fastest RAM from the QVL list of your motherboard, but I still don't recommend that you go past 64 megahertz because like I said earlier not all processors are created equally two identical model CPUs might be able to run at different speeds one can run 8,000 megahertz and the other might struggle to go past 6400 megahertz I found the sweet spot for RAM to be 6,000 megahertz and CL32 or even CL30 but I don't recommend that you go any faster than this because you will pay quite a lot more and you do get diminishing returns and as always reliability for me is the most important thing I really don't care how powerful a PC is or how good it looks if every time you try and use it, it crashes, it's absolutely useless. Now, I'd really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got an idea for what kind of video we can make next, put it in the comments.